come to another interesting section of geometry. In this section, our focus will be on similar triangles. If you think you understand similar triangles, I tell you, you really need to watch this video from beginning to the end. Most especially, if you're writing WIAC in 2020, you really need to watch this video. <laughs> If this is your first time of watching my video, I would like you to subscribe to my channel, like my video, share it and give your comment. I would love to reply your comment. What are similar triangles? Similar triangles are triangles that have the same shapes but different sizes. They have the same shapes but they have what different sizes. You need to take note of this. When you say similar triangles, how do you identify them? You identify them by their what? Angles. Two triangles are said to be similar if their angles are equal. The size does not really matter. As long as the angles within them are equal, then the triangles are said to be similar. Let's take these uh, two figures. Let's use it to buttress the explanation. We have figure 1 and figure 2. Figure 1 is triangle ABC and figure 2 is triangle PQR. From the two triangles, you will discover that the shape of figure 1 is smaller compared to that of figure 2. But these two triangles are similar. How did I know that? If you look at the angles, you will discover that angle B is equal to angle Q. You can see the sign, the single arc that is drawn within the vertex of B and Q. At the same time, angle C is equal to angle R. It follows that angle A is equal to angle P. Automatically, figure 1 and figure 2 are similar triangles. So we could say that triangle ABC from the above is similar to triangle PQR. I'd like you to take note of this. Very important. This statement, never forget it. The side of similar triangles which are opposite to equal angle in each are called corresponding side. I'll repeat the statement. The side of similar triangles which are opposite to equal angle in each are called corresponding side. Never forget that. To understand this statement, let's have triangle XYZ and triangle ABC. If you look at triangle XYZ and triangle ABC, both are similar triangles. How did I know that? The angles in XYZ, they are 80 degree, 40 degree, and 60 degree. If you come to ABC, we also have 80 degree, 60 degree, and 40 degree. So both are what? Similar triangles. The question now is, the corresponding sides. What are the corresponding sides? Let's check that. To identify corresponding sides, you don't need to stress yourself. All you need to do is locate the angle that are what? The same or similar. For instance, um, angle 60 degree is located at Z and angle 60 degree is also located at A in the other triangle. The first triangle is located at Z and in the other triangle is located at what? At A. So what is the opposite side of angle 60 degree in the first triangle? Let's draw the line. The opposite side is side XY. If you come to the second triangle, the opposite side is side BC. So automatically, we could say that XY corresponds to BC. Oh, you're getting it. Let's take another one. Let's look at um, XZ. XZ correspond to AB. How did I know that? 
if you look at the angle 40 degree in the first figure 40 degree from the first figure try to look at the opposite side plot the line to get the opposite side you discover that the line the opposite side fall on x z and if you come to 40 degree in the second triangle the 40 degree is located at c and draw the line to take the opposite side it falls on a b so our x z correspond to a b and finally our yz correspond to ac you can do that yourself just check it draw the line if you look at angle 80 degree pull the line out you discover that what we have is yz which corresponds to what ac from the other side of the diagram so if you're able to identify the corresponding size of similar triangles it will help you to solve a lot of problems so make sure you put this at the back of your mind don't forget that shortly we'll move into problem solving but before then you need to understand that for you to resolve problems in similar triangles you must understand the theorem that is used for resolving these problems so we'll be talking about two theorems basically today but there are three theorems the first one is intercept theorem then we have equiangular theorem we have angle bisector theorem in my last video i discussed intercept theorem under intercept theorem we have another three sub theorems so if you really need to get intercept theorem you need to watch my last video in the description below there's a link there for you just go there right after this video click on the link to get intercept theorem in detail so for this video we're focusing on equiangular theorem and angle bisector theorem let's consider our first theorem here equiangular theorem this theorem says that similar triangles are equiangular and have their corresponding side in the same ratio i'll repeat that similar triangles are equiangular that means the angles are the same and have their corresponding side in the same ratio in other words in this theorem all you just need to get is what the corresponding sides then convert them to ratio very simple let's look at these two triangles triangle abc and triangle pqr in these two triangles we could see that ab is corresponding to pq from the initial explanation so if ab corresponds to pq if we are converting it into ratio it means that ab over pq that is the meaning or ab ratio pq ab over pq also bc correspond to qr so that will give us bc over qr and ac correspond to pr and that will give us what ac over pr remember we said that equiangular i mean remember we said that similar triangles are equiangular and have their what corresponding side in the same ratio if that be the case then we could say that ab over pq is equal to bc over qr which is equal to ac over pr this is a theorem if you understand this theorem you can use it what to solve problem easily let's solve our first problem here we have our first problem in this video problem one this problem is a wire question so if you're writing wire take note of this problem you might have similar question what is the question the question says given that ql is 2 cm lm is 3 cm and pr is 4 cm calculate qr in the figure below ql is 2 lm is 3 pr is 4 and qr is what you're looking for you have the diagram now somebody will ask me that oh, we are only having one diagram but you, you are explaining similar triangles and in all your explanation you've been giving us two diagrams but this is just one diagram yeah it's one diagram 
But in this diagram, we can bring out two triangles. Let's do that. Let's bring out the two triangles. Just like we have here. We have triangle LQM and we have another triangle PQR. The bigger triangle PQR and the smaller one inscribed in the bigger one LQM. If you look at this triangle very well, you discover that the triangles are equiangular. How do I mean? Both triangles have 60 degrees within them. It shows that what they are equiangular. So we can use the equiangular theorem to see if we could solve the problem. Now what do we do? If you look at the triangle very well, you discover that angle P is equal to angle M. Check it. Angle P from the bigger triangle is equal to angle M from the smaller triangle. Also, angle Q in the smaller triangle is equal to angle Q in the bigger triangle. I'd like you to take note of that because Q is similar to both of them, so the angles are equal. Then, angle L will be equal to angle R. If that be the case, we need to identify our corresponding side. Once we're able to do that, our problem is solved. Now, let's check angle P and angle M again and bring out the corresponding side. From angle P, we discover that our corresponding side for angle P, our corresponding side is QR. Did you see that? QR. And for angle M, our corresponding side is LQ. So the ratio there will be QR over LQ. For angle Q, in the bigger triangle, our corresponding side is PR. And for the smaller triangle, our corresponding side is LM. Then we move to the last one. For angle L, our corresponding side is QM. But for R, our corresponding side is PQ. So take note of this. So if we bring out our theorem, if we angular theorem, we could say that QR over LQ is equal to PR over LM, which is equal to QM over PQ. So if you look at it very well, you will discover that what we actually need to solve this problem is QR over LQ is equal to PR over LM. That's all we need to solve this problem. Because we're looking for QR, we have our LR, which is uh, 2 cm, we have our PR, which is 4 cm, and we have our LM, which is 3 cm. So we are good to go. So QR over 2 is equal to 4 over 3. If we cross multiply, we get 3QR is equal to 8. Automatically, if we divide both sides by 3, our QR will give us 2 whole number, 2 over 3 centimeter, or we can say 2.67 centimeter. Very simple. Now let's look at theorem 2. Theorem 2 states that the bisector of an angle in a triangle divide the opposite side in the ratio of the side containing the angle. The bisector of an angle in a triangle divide the opposite side in the ratio of the side containing the angle. Now let's take a look at this. This is triangle ABC. In this triangle, line AM bisect the triangle ABC. And the side that is opposite to the angle A is side BC. If we go by our theorem, the side that is opposite to the angle BC will form a ratio from that side. And the ratio will be BM over MC. Can you see that? Then we equate the ratio to the other two sides of the triangle. So we're going to have BM over MC is equal to 
BA over AC. You notice something that since we took the ratio from BM, equating it to the other side, we started with BA. What I'm trying to bring out here is that we could take the equation the other way around. In other words, we could have CM over MB is equal to CA over AB. So if we're taking it from C, it's going to start with C at the other side too. But if we're taking it from B, then it's going to start with B at the other side. So if the left hand side is starting with a BM, the right hand side will start with a BA. So, but if the left hand side is starting with a CM, what it means is that the right hand side will start with what? A CA. That is just it. Though the alphabet does not really matter, we could have triangle pick you out. The most important thing is for you to get the technique in getting the equation or the formula needed to resolve the theorem. Let's have a problem on this theorem. Now let us look at problem two. A second problem in the video. Now the question says find x in the diagram below. Find x in the diagram below. If you look at the diagram, you discover that it is triangle ABC, uh, where BD is the bisector of ABC. Going by our theorem, we could say that AD over DC is equal to BA over CB. So, and we already see from the diagram that our AD is 3.5. So, we have 3.5 over X is equal to 5 over 12. So, we cross multiply. 3.5 multiplied by 12 is equal to 5 multiplied by X. 3.5 multiplied by 12 gives us 42. 5 multiplied by x will give us 5x. And our x is equal to 42 over 5, which is equal to 8.4. Very simple. Let's solve one more problem in this video. This is a technical question. The question is technical. So you need to follow me carefully to get the detail. Now here is the problem. The question says, in the triangle ABC, AB is 30 cm, BC is 32 cm, CA is 18 cm. If X is the midpoint of BC and the bisector of angle A meets BC at Y, find the value of XY. I love this kind of question. How do you solve this problem? Make a sketch. We have triangle ABC, just like it is sketched right now. Don't forget that AB is 30 cm, AC is 18 cm. That means AB will be longer than AC. So that's the triangle. From this, we could see that X is the midpoint of triangle ABC. So between B and C, X is our midpoint. And AY is the bisector of BC. So we sketch the line there. So you can see all the lines are formed already. We have this triangle. So we have this problem to solve. Let's fix the values. We have 30 centimeter in line AB, 18 centimeter for AC, and uh, for BC is 32 centimeter. Let's sketch it like that. Now, if X is a midpoint, it means that X divide BC into equal parts. So BX will be 16 and XC will also be what? 16. Why? Because BC, the entire line is 32. So if we split it into two, we have 16, 16. Now we're looking for XY. We don't know what XY is. Let us call XY A. Let us call it A. So once we find our A, it means we've gotten our xy so according to our theorem this is what we do we say that since the bisector is 
ay so automatically by over yc will be equal to ab over ac you see that then we continue our by is 16 plus a look at it xy is a and by cover 16 and also cover a so our by is 16 plus a let's look at another one our yc is 16 minus a our yc is 16 minus a do you agree on that just check it if you look at it from x to c is 16 and from y to c is what we don't know so if we can subtract a from that 16 that means we have our what our yc so we have the value of by and we have the value of yc another value is ab our ab is 30 centimeter and our ac is 18 centimeter so let's substitute these values into the formula we already have on ground so automatically we're going to have 16 plus a over 16 minus a is equal to 30 over 18 so when we cross multiply we have 18 into bracket 16 plus a is equal to 30 into bracket 16 minus a 18 multiplied by 16 to open the bracket will give us 288 and 18 multiplied by a will give us 18a is equal to 18 i mean 30 multiplied by 16 will give us 480 minus 30 multiplied by a that's 30a 288 minus 480 is equal to minus 30a minus 18a so if we do that subtraction there 288 minus 480 will give us minus 192 is equal to minus 48a so we divide both sides by minus 48 to get our a so our a is equal to minus 192 over minus 48 so the value of our a is 4 since our a is xy automatically xy is equal to 4 centimeter very simple i believe you understand this lesson you know what check this this is a problem for you i believe you can solve it give your answers in the comment section i would love to interact with you when i see your answers thank you for watching this video i hope you find it impactful this is the first time, like I said earlier, that you are watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can get more of my video. Like the video, share it, and give your comments. I will see you in my next video.